Kia ora team, my name's Ben, let's talk the H's and T's. So these are our reversible causes of cardiac arrest. With our H's, hypoxia, hypovolemia, hypothermia, hyper and hypokalemia, hydrogen ion excess. Then we've got our tension pneumothorax, tamponade, toxins, thrombus, and there we go. Okay, let's go through one by one and find out what they mean. So starting with hypoxia, hypo means low, oxia, oxygen. If we have low oxygen levels, we get inadequate oxygen delivery to our tissues. If this happens, we get anaerobic metabolism. So anaerobic means without oxygen, and if we make energy without oxygen, we get nasty byproducts that make our body more acidic. This leads to cellular dysfunction, so our, our cells don't function correctly, and then eventually our heart is gonna stop beating. So what type of things could cause hypoxia? Drowning, choking, hanging, or respiratory causes like severe asthma. And this unfortunately is quite a common cause for our pediatric cardiac arrests. So our next age is hypovolemia. So remember hypo, low, volume, emia in the blood. So decreased blood volume. How's this gonna be a problem? So if we have decreased circulating blood volume, this is gonna reduce the venous return, so blood coming back to the heart. This is gonna reduce our preload, and then it's gonna reduce our stroke volume, so blood leaving the heart, reducing our cardiac output, and therefore we get decreased blood flow to all our important organs, including the brain and the heart, leading to a secondary cardiac arrest. So what can cause hypovolemia? So I mean, the obvious one is bleeding out, but we can't forget we can have to have internal bleeding that is also going to lead to blood loss and conditions like distributive shock like sepsis anaphylaxis is going to cause massive amount of vasodilation and capillary permeability so fluid can leak out of circulation in that way as well next h hypothermia so how does this affect us so hypo low thermia temperature if we have if our body temperature lowers this is gonna slow down our metabolic rate and our enzyme activity. So this is how we create our ATP. So if we can't do these things, our myocardium excitability, so the ability for our heart muscle to contract is gonna decrease and we're gonna have decreased cardiac conduction and therefore we're gonna get bradycardia, arrhythmias, and then cardiac arrest. So who would we be suspicious of for hypothermia? This is gonna be someone who's been in extreme cold for a prolonged length of time. Next age, hyper or hypokalemia. So the K in kalemia stands for potassium and emia in the blood. So why we need the right amount of potassium is because it's incredibly important uh, in our cell membranes because remember the movement of ions creates that membrane potential makes the inside negative the outside positive and that is how we send messages along cells so nerves or muscle tissue and how we stimulate the, them to contract if we have too much or not enough potassium it's going to affect with our nerve conduction and muscle contraction potentially leading to cardiac arrest so who are we suspicious of this? Crush injury patient. If someone's had a crush injury, then circulation has been occluded, the cells at the site of crush, or the cells that are no longer receiving blood flow, are gonna die. When those cells die, they're gonna release the potassium from inside the cell to the extracellular space and into the blood. If that, if that crush injury is sustained, then it's okay until the crush is released because then we get a flood of potassium back into circulation. And this is where we can lead to arrhythmias and cardiac arrest. So other people could be renal impairment. So if our kidneys aren't doing their proper role of filtering and excreting, so if they excrete too much or not enough, and then a drug overdose. And our last H, is hydrogen ion excess. So this is just a, a funny way of saying acidosis because our free hydrogen ions, when they're floating around in the blood, 
they're going to make us more acidic. If we get more acidic, then this decreases the contractility of our myocardium, so our heart muscle can't contract as well. Acidosis also impairs our enzyme functions, so all our enzymes we need to, uh, to generate ATP, and it also reduces the responsiveness to catecholamines. So these are our stress hormones, like adrenaline, noradrenaline. So when we're trying to compensate to increase our blood pressure, these are no longer as effective. So with this decreased heart rate, decreased contractility, eventually leading to cardiac arrest. So who are we going to be suspicious about for hydrogen ion excess and acidosis? So an obvious one would be diabetic ketoacidosis, which is poorly controlled type 1 diabetes, or in children who have a new onset of type 1 diabetes. We get a buildup of ketones in the body, and those ketones increase our acidity. Other times when we can get acidic, potentially later stages of sepsis, when we've got poor transport of oxygen, and therefore anaerobic metabolism, building up all our acidic waste products, or renal failure. If our kidneys can't excrete our hydrogen ions, and they build up, again, we can get hydrogen ion excess and acidosis. So things to look for, remember we get that Cushmill respirations, where we have fast, deep breaths to try to blow off CO2 in an attempt to decrease our acidity. All right, on to our T's. So we've got a tension pneumothorax. So what's happening here is we've got a, a trapdoor effect and air building up in our pleural cavity, which is gonna cause our lung to collapse and as that air builds up, builds up, builds up in the pleural cavity, it's gonna squash the lung, squash the mediastinum, so all the stuff in the middle of our body, and start to squash our heart and our great vessels. So if our heart and our big blood vessels are squashed, then we're gonna get less venous return, less stroke volume, less cardiac output, and eventually cardiac arrest. So we're gonna be suspicious of anyone with trauma around our thoracic region, for an external cause, but we can also cause a tension pneumothorax internally by aggressive ventilation. So things to look for, asymmetry in chest rise and fall, tracheal deviation would be a very late sign, subcutaneous emphysema, or absent breath sounds on one side of the chest. Next T is tamponade. So cardiac tamponade. Just like our lungs are wrapped with layers of glad wrap, which is our pleura, and that's what air gets into with a tension pneumothorax, well the same thing can occur with our cardiac tamponade. The heart is wrapped by layers of glad wrap called the pericardium, and if we have trauma to the chest, potentially we can get bleeding inside that pericardial space, and so again, we're gonna start squashing and compressing the heart and great vessels. So fluid accumulation in that pericardial sac is gonna compress the heart, it's gonna limit how our ventricles can fill, which is then gonna limit how much we can squeeze out and limit our stroke volume and cardiac output, and then leading to obstructive shock and cardiac arrest. So remember, this was our Bex triad, muffled heart sounds, jugular vein distension, and hypotension. Bex triad for cardiac tamponade. So yep, definitely trauma, but we can also think about post-cardiac surgery or pericarditis um, to cause a cardiac tamponade. Our next T is toxins. Toxins, poisoning, so ingestion of any toxic material. We're thinking, has someone overdosed on medication, cleaning products, taking too many recreational drugs? Looking at things like pinpoint pupils, altered mental status, unusual odors, so what's happening here? Well, a toxin can depress our central nervous system and then interfere with our myocardial conduction or myocardial contractility, getting hypoxia, arrhythmias, and moving on to arrest. So it's gonna be different with different toxins. And then our final T is thrombus. So a thrombus is a blood clot. What can cause this? We can have a pulmonary embolism that could come from atrial fibrillation, having a clot form, and then that clot breaks off, 
goes through our right atria, right ventricle, and into the pulmonary circulation, gets stuck, and now we've got a thrombus or pulmonary embolism cutting off our blood supply to the lungs. If this happened, we've got obstruction of blood flow, therefore hypoxia, and our heart fails, and then cardiac arrest. The other thrombus, of course, could be our myocardial infarction, which is our primary cardiac arrest. So if we get a thrombus in one of our coronary arteries, that's gonna cut off blood supply, and our heart tissue is gonna to start to die, and then we go into cardiac arrest. All right, team, so there are our H's and T's, and a quick refresh on the path that could lead to cardiac arrest. All right, happy studying.